Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's Art of Passive Income podcast, our guest is Chuck Bongiovanni, the co-founder and CEO of MajesticResidences.com. He is a certified franchise executive and the founder of Care Patrol Franchise Systems, the largest franchise senior placement company in the nation with over 150 offices. His social work background makes him a natural pioneer of the senior placement and referral industry for the past 27 years. In his placement agent career, he and his company placed over 100,000 seniors in assisted living and residential homes across the country. Chuck, welcome. Thanks, Mark. It's great to be here. So, Chuck, give us an overview of what is Majestic Residences? Sure. We are a residential assisted living home franchise. So what that is, is I want you to think of a big assisted living community, you know, ones you drive by when you go to work every day, you know, and shrink that down so it can fit in an actual residential neighborhood, a residential home. So we're licensed for six to 16 residents. So um, six or 16 seniors would live in this home. Um, and again, in a residential neighborhood. And that really depends on um, the number uh, of residents the state allows. Some states allow only six, some states allow 16. So it's really a an assisted living facility right next door to you. Yeah, okay. It's an assisted living facility right next door to you. And I remember, this is a, a few years ago. Mm-hmm. Wow, maybe it's three, four years ago now. Um, the late... Gene Florido being on this podcast and we're talking about assisted living and the business. And he made a really great comment to me. He said, you're either going to own the facility or you're going to be in the facility. Yep. Because either way, if we're lucky, we're going to end up there eventually. Yeah. So you're going you're to deal with it somehow, right? Either yourself. You're going to be dealing with it somehow. Yeah. Yourself, or your parents. My My parents are 80. Uh, luckily they're, they're doing well, but I can tell you, I can see the future where their friends are getting ready to go into assisted living. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. And, and, and sometimes, you know, these big grand places that you think of, you know, um, they may not be the, I mean, they're great for some people, but they may not be great for most seniors. You know, um, our homes tend to take care of those who need a little bit more help. So it's kind of like a mix, uh, kind of a in between a big assisted living independent place where they go play shuffleboard and stuff and a nursing home. So when they need a little bit more care, that's when they come to a, a majestic residence home. Okay. So walk me through what that care would look like. Let's, let's take somebody who might be 85 years old. Mm-hmm. They might have a, a hard time walking. Mm-hmm. Maybe they're having a more difficult time remembering to take their medicine. Yep. Is that the person yeah. or you just said my average my average resident in our homes. Okay. Someone just like that. Someone who can't live at home anymore by themselves or you know these days having a caregiver come into your home, you know, that's that's cost you anywhere from 30 to 35 40 dollars an hour. So it gets real cost prohibitive to have someone in your home taking care of your mom, you know, 12 hours a day or 24 hours a day is almost impossible these days. So it's a real cost effective um, option because our homes, we, we charge anywhere between four and $8,500 per month, um, you know, per resident. Okay. So the economics seem to make a lot of sense. Let's say I buy a, a rental home. Mm-hmm. Well, I could convert that those mm-hmm. rooms. Mm-hmm. Now I've got a, a uh, an assisted facility, uh, assisted living facility. But from my point of view, and I remember talking about this with Gene, I could either be an operator, which like, seemed to be a lot of work. There's right. nothing seemed passive about that, or I could convert it and then sell it to a company that would be an operator and or at least or lease it. it or lease it yeah right. lease it to one of our franchisees or lease it one of the franchisees but from a completely passive standpoint as an investment walk me through the franchise model and sure. who is 
the person that would be a good fit for investing in this franchise. Sure. So let's let's take it from purchasing a home and leasing it to one of our operators. Let's let's take it from that frame. Sure. So someone would purchase a um, one uh, a single level home, um, probably with like five bedrooms in it, with an attached garage. Usually, a five bedroom home is going to have you know a three or four car garage, maybe. So we can convert that garage to two to four more bedrooms, right? So now, yeah, and your your master bedroom is always a semi private room because it's huge. So with a, a five bed home, ranch style, we just got 10 bedrooms or 10, 10 residents out of it out of nine bedrooms. So what our what the investor would do is purchase the home, um, renovate it, you know, get it to shape where they can add those extra bedrooms. Um, they usually take one bathroom that isn't the master bedroom. Oh, one bathroom, I'm sorry. One bathroom, um, they basically will keep the commode in it will take away any cabinets and make a single a single standing um, uh, pedestal sink and then take the bathtub out and then tile it. So it's one big shower room, you know, one big spa, shall we say. Right. Uh, and that's where all the, the residents would uh, take their showers. So what we've been looking at is um, our investors will purchase a home, put the money into it. And their return um, is usually between uh, 0.85 and 1% of the total cost of the home plus renovations. Okay. So if you buy a home for, let's say, 600000 and you're going to put, a hundred, let's say, 100000 into it, uh, maybe less, but 100000 into it, uh, so your total cost is $700,000, um, our recommended lease is you know 7000 a month tops and maybe a little bit less uh, if you do the 0.85%. And the franchisee is paying, you know, all your taxes. Um, so basically, a triple net lit, uh, lease. So okay. that that's the model for just an investor. Um, they don't get any any part of the you know, monies that's coming in, of course, because the operator does. But right. if they want to be an operator and investor, uh, we have an option where you know basically they would do the same thing: purchase a house, then they would hire a licensed manager uh, to run the home itself. And that licensed manager is the one who's going to be doing the day-to-day -day operations. So they're going to hire your caregivers that work in the home, uh, run the business. Our expectations for our franchisees in that level, they would have to know the families, have to know the residents. They're, you know, it's not totally passive, but maybe it's maybe four or five hours a week. Okay. Uh, if they do that, they do it that way. I mean, if they have a really good manager, that's really the key in this. So if they if they do it that way. They could actually do, uh, have a you know separate company for real estate, separate company for the business. They can pay themselves uh, a lease cost or you know a, a rent cost, and but also make the profit off the home itself. I see. Okay, so if you walk me through a typical case study, sure. Okay, and, and let's just use because we're both in Phoenix. Let's use the Phoenix market, which is uh, going to be a pricier yeah. market. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's say you um, purchase a home for eight hundred thousand. Uh, let's go all in. Let's say a million all in, right? Okay. Okay, all in. You're let's say you're in Scottsdale because we have four homes in Scottsdale. So say you're in Scottsdale and you are charging between six thousand and seven thousand per month per resident. You're 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 bringing in sixty to seventy thousand dollars per month. Your um, your biggest cost is labor. Okay. So we usually estimate our labor cost between 45 and 50%. Uh, okay. 10 residents, you're going to need anywhere between two or three caregivers during the day, um, two caregivers in the evening hours, then one caregiver overnight. So you're basically running uh, uh, five, six, seven, eight, eight caregivers uh, per day. So that's usually 45, 50%. Your your food cost is not much at all. On a, on a ten bed home, you're looking about eighteen hundred, maybe two thousand tops uh, per month. Okay. Um, you know we have a six percent gross franchise fee, and then your mortgage. And so usually in a ten bed home, if it's run right, a uh, ten bed home, you know you're looking at your potential break even at bed. I want to say seven and a half uh, to bed eight. So your profitability, you're looking all at at 
bed eight and a half, shall we say, uh, bed nine and bed 10. And if you're charging 6,000 a month, there's some potential really good profitability in there. You, you, you know, you'll have to be pretty well capitalized to get to that point, okay. right? Um, and we're really good with marketing. So filling the homes hasn't been too much of an issue for us. Um, but you know, we want our franchisees to understand that until they get to break even, um, they're not a break even. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, right. Yeah. And, and so when you're looking at a franchisee, what is their typical background? Great question. Where you're going to say, okay, this is a good franchisee. Yeah. They don't really need any kind of medical experience because we don't do any kind of medical things in the home, right? Um, they have to know business. You know, I like the real estate experience because um, real. what I found my real estate uh, experience franchisees understand that I'm going to build one home and then you know what? Then I'm going to build two. Then I'm going to build three because the economies of scale, once you have three homes, you could have just one manager. You know, you pay the manager a little bit more, but you're not paying three different managers, right? Um, so, you know, some knowledge of real estate is, is a plus. Business experience is a plus also. You know, the worst thing you want to do is start a business and not know a thing about, oh, uh, I have to pay taxes on my employees. Um, you know, but we help with all that. We have systems that take care of all the operations. Um, you know, someone who's well capitalized, we want to make sure that they, they can get to that break even point. Um, and then after they're at the break even point, start thinking about owning a second home. Sure. And definitely someone who, uh, someone who cares, you know, uh, these, these are people who's pretty their, you know, their, their lives in our hands. You know, we want to make sure that they understand how to work with staff. Uh, to make sure that, uh, you know, every shift is covered, uh, but more importantly, be able to relate to the families and understand, you know, what mom and dad is going through and the tough decision it makes to to have mom go move out of her house to move into a home like ours. Yeah, absolutely. And I would think that mom and dad are going to be more excited about moving into a smaller home that feels more homey yes. than a large facility that is just, I mean, I've been to some of these facilities. My, my grandma was, was mm -hmm. in one and it's not a very pretty picture. If you've, if you've ever been there, it's the, I, I my, my grandma did not enjoy it. Then yeah. Cause at all. a lot of times they, they tend to like, when you go to a big place, you know, they may have 200 people there, but you, you might only see 10 because you know, they're all in their rooms. Right. Right. So what's, what's great about a small home is first of all, I believe it's a lot safer. Uh, because, you know, it's a smaller area to cover and the caregivers know exactly what's going on in the home, right? And there's activities and those kinds of things too. Um, but yeah, it's more of a home environment. It's a little less of a transition from going from your home to another home as compared to going to your home to this big facility where the dining room is, you know, 2,000 feet away from you. And you got to walk all the way there all the time. And, uh, you know, it's a different, it's different clientele, you know? Yeah. He's a lot more social, may like the bigger place better than someone who really needs to care. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I remember asking Gene this question. I'm going to ask you the same question for the nervous Nellies out there. Uh huh. And, you know, mom's in the facility. She trips, she breaks her hip. And now the family's upset. Where were you? Where was your care? And we're yeah. going to sue. Yeah. Yeah. This is. Now, I remember how Gene answered this question, but I would, I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this take. Well, you know, you, know, you, can't, you can't guarantee someone isn't going to, going to fall because seniors fall sometimes. Sure. Right? Um, yeah. But I can guarantee you that if mom falls in her home, she's on the floor for hours, you know, mm -hmm. and which could be getting, you know, exacerbating the medical condition. Um, where in one of our homes, if, a, if an emergency happens like that, you know, we're immediately calling the uh, the ambulance and, and getting there checked over, uh, both at the home and in the hospital, you know. But as far as liability goes in the home, um, rarely do you see uh, a home get sued for things, unless it's gross negligence. You know, you leave the you leave the front door open and you have a wandering person with Alzheimer's, right? Um, you know, it really comes down to documentation. If you're documenting correctly, your liability is, is completely, you know, almost nil, shall we say. Right. And we have software in the home that reminds the caregivers what they need to chart on and what they need to document. So, yeah, I can understand that. The other question people always have is about what about HOAs, right? 
Mm -hmm. um, I can tell you that an HOA has never stopped a residential care home from opening due to a real little law, and I'm being sarcastic here, Mark, <laughs> yeah. called the Federal Fair Housing Act, right? right. So uh, they can't stop you. The only thing they can do is they can make sure you keep your garage door on. So basically, you build a false wall behind the garage door when you build the bedrooms. Okay, got it. And so if I want to really get it into this business, and I want to do it in a big way, I've got to think about not one home. I really should be thinking about economies of scale. You should yeah. be homes. Yeah. And getting an operator, uh, I can start using the franchise model with Majestic Residences. They're going to help with the processes, the systems, the people. What What else are you going to help me with so I can really build this? Yeah. Uh, a profitable uh, investment. And then is it something where it's a cash flow play or is it a cash flow appreciation play where my whole time is maybe uh, the economic cycle, for example? Yeah. So right now, maybe I'm getting a better deal. And then as we get, we see interest rates go down, we're going to see a larger appreciation on the homes. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's 100% what you just said. You know, um, uh, the only time someone leases a home from someone is when they don't have the money to purchase the home. But if you purchase the home and you have the business, that's where you appreciate the most. Okay. You know, uh, both, right, and I agree, interest rates are high right now, but you know what? Um, that actually slows down competition, right? right? Because people aren't getting into, many people aren't getting into business because they're fearful, right? right. Which, is, right. which is, you know, that's the best time to get into business. I mean, Gene and I started this company in the middle of COVID. Right, Judah, yeah. Judah, twenty twenty. You know, that's just how we roll, man. <laughs> well, yeah, that was very smart. That was very <laughs> smart. So, let's let's get meta about you, Chuck. Okay. Obviously, we're all aging. We're all getting older. We're all going to lose everyone and everything. Mm -hmm. Given what you know about this industry, do you have a long term plan? And what is your advice to someone? who's listening to this, maybe in their 40s, their 50s, their 60s, even their 70s, right. about their long-term care and in the way that they should be thinking about it and the trends happening in this industry. Sure. Personally, my long-term care plan is basically uh, turn my home into a care home, to be very honest with you. Okay. You know? yeah. uh, turn my, care, my home into a care home and, and have... Uh, yeah, maybe four or five other residents with me and, uh, uh, you know, for social reasons, of course, and then basically have them pay for my caregivers. That's the way I look at it, right? right. Someone in their 30s, 40s, 50s, I would say purchase long-term care insurance right now okay? because um, that'll help pay for your own, you know, long-term care needs. Um, someone older in their 60s and 70s, you know, um, do everything you can to improve your health, you know? Um prolong the, the the time that you uh can be in your own home and be independent um although in our homes we try to make people as independent as possible right but that really is it you know watch you know watch your health invest in yourself right right that's the best way to look at it okay fantastic and then when you say long-term care insurance mm -hmm. i remember there was a day when it was very affordable yes today it does not seem to be the case is there a provider that you would recommend um you know the only providers that are left are the bigger companies you know okay. like new york life and those kinds of things but you, you need to look at it in perspective right right now um you know let's say the state of north carolina your average care is you know eight thousand a month right a right. hundred grand a year and you know if you're in the home for five years that's half a million dollars you know, so it's it's relative what you pay for the insurance compared to what you're going to pay for care. Right. Absolutely. And so when we're evaluating this franchise from other franchises, and we're looking at it from an investment standpoint, a yield standpoint, perhaps even a time standpoint, mm -hmm. where why should a an investor seriously consider putting the time capital into a majestic residences yeah. versus say Oh, I don't know. Let's pick on, uh, you know, a, a, you know, a dogtopia. Right. Okay. Great question. Great question. Um, I think it's one of the only franchise systems around where you have investment being made on real estate and on the business. You know, you own a dogtopia, 
you basically are selling the business. You own a Burger King and you're selling the business. But this is you're selling the business and real estate at the same time, right? And you can even say at some point in time, you know what? I want to keep the real estate and just sell the business. And that could be very profitable also. Excellent. Excellent. I love that answer. So if we're going to get into this, we're going to have to have financing. Mm -hmm. And for the first home, because it is a it is being converted into a business, will the bank demand that you put 30% down or 40% no. down or no. you put less down? Yeah, our franchise, uh, we're, we're SBA approved. Okay. And believe it or not, as I mean, people hear all the time, especially in the real estate world, SBA won't invest in your business because they're not going to basically, you know, do a flip, right? Right. In, in this business, it's the only business where SBA will pay for real estate. So uh, you can get an SBA loan um, for the real estate and some capital needed to start the business. And we have a we have a, a, a large number of um, banks and lenders who understand our business. You know, sometimes our franchisees make the mistake, you know, I know my local banker real well, and they'll go to the local banker, the local banker says, uh, a commercial loan in a, re in, a, in a residential neighborhood, sorry, can't do it. But the people we work with, just they, they do it for a living. So uh, it makes it a lot easier. And I've seen some deals, you know, 10% down, right? I've seen okay. some, I've seen some actually last. Uh, so it really depends on, you know, your, your, your uh, income and your, uh, your credit score and such, but you want to make sure you're going to a lender who understands the business and we can provide that for our franchisees. Excellent. So what should I have asked you that I did not ask you? Um, well, our franchise fee is 49500 And with that, we're going to work with you to get your license. Uh, so your license in your state, all your operations, marketing. We're very big on our, our marketing uh, arm on it. Um, and, you know, we're just, we're just looking for people that want to make the difference, make a difference. Okay. Fantastic. And, uh, Jack, this is, you know, such a, a fascinating model, but getting back to the beginning of the conversation, this is something we all have to seriously think about. Yeah. And to your point, you're going to take your own home and convert it. Yep. As, you know, real estate investors. And when we're identifying the homes to invest in, should we be looking at, because let's say, for example, location, location, location. Mm -hmm. What would be a demographic profile where you'd say, this is a good area, this is a good type of home to really consider to convert into a long-term assisted care facility? Great question. My answer is very different than if you ask anyone else. And that's just because I've been in the industry for 33 years. Uh, a lot of people are going to say, you're going to look for you know, a rich area. Well, let me tell you something. People with a lot of money have the money to keep mom at their home with a caregiver, right? right? So the way I look at it personally is I want our homes to be located where there are a lot of other residential care homes. Because first of all, competition doesn't scare me at all. Secondly, if there's a lot of homes, you know there's a market there, right? Right. So I know some people that say, you know, you need to look for this economic indicator and this and this and this. And, you know, the best economic indicator is just basically do a better job where work is already being done, right? right. So Scott, Scottsdale, Arizona, for example, is zip code 85254 has the most residential care homes in the world. There's over 160 of them just in that zip code. And we have four that have been full for a year and a half now. So uh, that's really what, I, you know, when a franchisee says, I found a great area, you know, I'll put it this way, I would never open a care home in Hollywood, California. Never. Simply Why? They've got the money to stay home. They have the money to stay home. I. It, it's so funny because we do the same thing in our land business. We want to go where the other land investors are. Uh huh. There really, there really is no competition. The market right. is just massive. Right. Well, Chuck, your your mentorship has been been fantastic. But now we're at that point in the podcast where I want to ask you for your tip of the week, a website, yeah. a resource, a book, something that's actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What have you got? Okay, I'm gonna give you my tip of the week. I love the sign I see behind you. Chaos is a friend of mine. 
Yeah. Uh, I have a story about what I call the sexy buffalo. Okay. Now, buffalo are the only animals ever, only animals that when they see a thunderstorm coming, they run directly into it. All other animals, including humans, run away and hide. But while they're running away and they're hiding, that storm intensifies. So when it finally comes over them, it's actually worse than what it was when they had that decision. Do I run into it or do I run away from it? Right? Right. So uh, I want everyone to be a sexy buffalo and run into the storm. Uh, And that's how I found success. You know, um, you know, we started this company when COVID hit. Who the heck would start a senior residential home, you know, during the middle of COVID? Well, I'll tell you something. Um, It was a great decision that we made because when everyone else was running away, we ran into it. And I look at it now in real estate. When everyone else is freaking out because of interest rates, run into it. Run. Because you could always, you know, you could always, uh, you know, refinance later when things go back down. But all your competition's freaking out right now. All of them. So take advantage of that while they're freaking out and doing nothing. You're already going to be a year or two ahead of them when you think about it. I love it. I love it. Well, Chuck, this has uh, been so good. I I want to give my tip of the week. And before I do so, I want just to remind the listeners about our sponsor, which is Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can transform your life. Start building that passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents, and go up that mountain of last land investing quickly safely and efficiently with Scott Todd as your Sherpa. Oh, I know what you're thinking. What's that flight school investment going to be? It ain't going to cost you nothing. Guaranteed you're going to make back that tuition 180 days or less. Just show us your work. Learn more. Go to landgeek.com forward slash training. Landgeek.com forward slash training. My tip of the week is learn more about this exciting business forward slash real estate opportunity. Go to MajesticResidences.com, MajesticResidences.com, download a free report to learn how the, the five ways franchising will disrupt the residential assisted living industry and, uh, and do that. Go ahead, Chuck. Mark, whatever, let me interrupt for one second. The MajesticResidences.com is our, is our consumer site for potential franchisees. Go to DiscoverMajesticResidences.com. DiscoverMajesticResidences.com. We'll have that. We'll have the link in the uh, show notes. Discover majesticresidences.com. I want to thank the listeners. Remind them the only way, the only way we get the quality of guests like a Chuck Bon Giovanni is if you do three little favors: follow, rate, review the podcast, send a screenshot of your review, support at thelanky.com. I'm going to send you a signed copy of Dirt Rich, and it just helps. All right, let freedom ring. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Mark. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Are you ready to learn how you can start building a passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents? Schedule a free consultation at thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Let freedom ring.